All right, hello, welcome back, fellow coder, to this Fresh Vote series where we are building a Java web app, real world web app from scratch, leveraging Spring Boot and other technologies. So, in our previous episode or lesson, uh, we created the ability to bring in some information about a uh, specific product. Um, but the page itself, if I load up my um, screen here, uh, the page itself is kind of ugly, right? Uh, so, if I log in to the fresh votes app uh, and we go to look at a product itself like product two uh it's kind of you know it's not very good looking and and um and we should so therefore we should use bootstrap to make it a little bit more uh pretty and as well i want to add the ability to update some properties of this uh particular product so in other words the name and whether or not it is publishable so we'll, we'll see how far we get uh in this lesson so First things first, let's make this a bit prettier. So this is where, again, we need to bring in Bootstrap, which I think we have it on the login page. So if I flip over to our login page, we have the Bootstrap min.css, so the minified Bootstrap code. We're using Bootstrap 413 for this particular one. So let's paste that into uh, the head, like so. And is there anything else we need to grab? Uh, let's see, this is jQuery. Uh, we'll see if we need jQuery or not. We probably will when we click on the submit button, well, we'll see, we'll see. We won't bring it in just yet. So this will bring in uh, Bootstrap. Now that class container should then, I believe, go away because, uh, let's see, does it complain? About, oh, it does complain about all of them, uh, even though it's it says undefined CSS. It should have picked it up from here. That's probably a setting inside of my IDE in order for it to, you know, properly match up the style sheets coming in from linked style sheets, but anyway. So ignore the fact that container is underscore or underlined in yellow. So this should work and see if it works um, with div, div class container. It should sort of center our uh, content on the page here. So when I refresh, yeah, it gets centered and you see the, the font changes a little bit. Um, so that's cool. That means it's working. Uh, Bootstrap is there and it's doing its job. So now we need to actually uh, bring in the ability to... Um, uh, update data, right? So the first piece of data that we want to update or, or have the ability to update uh, is the um, product name. So we'll bring in a th field, as I talked about in, in past episodes of what th field does. It allows us to link a front end HTML element with our model and specifically our uh, Java backend so that when we send and submit this form, it actually knows how to bind the data. So bind whatever text is in this text box this input type text with the uh, backend Java object. So it automatically populates the object. We're binding it to product.name, right? Because this is going to be the name. So if I say name like this, uh, we can see what that looks like. It won't be overly pretty. Um, so we have the name here and it won't be overly pretty because uh, there's some more stuff that we need to do in order to make this uh, nice for with the bootstrap code. So we've done this before, like on the login page, we use uh, groups, I believe form groups. So if we look at, yeah, form group row, right? So we use form group row and then we use call form label and form control. So these are all classes that we're bringing in from Bootstrap. Again, I talked about these before, so I won't go into, into detail again. Um, so really what we need to do here is we need to create a form group. And this will be a row, will be the name and the input. The name should be converted to a label just for, uh, you know, niceness. So that if you click on the name text, it will... Uh, highlight or uh, put your cursor into the input text box. It's just kind of a nice little piece of behavior that happens. And uh, the label for, so we need to hook this label up to the product name. So we need to put in the ID of the product name, which should just be name, right? It just sort of will create the name ID uh, attribute uh, by default. That's what the TH field will do. It'll create a name property. So name will be equal to name and the ID will be equal to name. So that's uh, essentially this will be expanded uh, at runtime, if you will, to be name equals name and ID equals name, right? That's what this will do. So it's equivalent to doing that. But doing this does not bind it uh, to our backend stuff. That's why I'm using th field instead. Um, anyway, so for name that hooks up uh, this label to this uh, input type ID or text ID. So the label will be hooked up to the ID, which will again, again, as you saw, be equal to name. Anyway, okay. 
back to the login page. Let's see what else. Uh, yeah, we've got some class stuff that we can sort of mess around with. Let's just copy that and see if that works. Because uh, that would be nice if we didn't have to do any additional uh, heavy lifting for the label class. So class equals all of this stuff. And again, if you don't know what's going on here, this was all covered in a previous lesson in depth. So um, I would highly recommend you go back and look at some of the bootstrap uh, tutorials. Okay, so and div form groups, so I can nest that in there. Okay, so let's have a look and see. Oh, do I need to have an input? I think probably have to have an input. Yeah, class form control on the input here. Okay, so let's see if that does anything in our front end to make it look nicer. There we go. So now the name, if I click on name, it should highlight the text area, right? Text box. So if I click on text box, there it is. If I click on name, it highlights it as well. Uh, so now this is actually hooked up to the back end. So if I actually posted some information and had um, a controller endpoint uh, capture the fact that I'm doing a post, it should populate the product um object with whatever I type in for the name and, and, and whatnot. Now the is published true, let's let's not you know handle that one yet. Check boxes are a bit more tricky. Let's stick with the um, name input field. And as we shrink our screen, it should automatically uh, change and make it more um, reactive or, or whatever. It, it'll, it'll be dynamic in terms of the display. So that's quite, that's nice, that, I like that. Uh, so that'll be mobile responsive. That's the word I was looking for, not reactive, responsive. Okay, so now let's hook it up so that we actually can post, because right now there's no button here to say update or submit or something like that, right? So let's have a button, uh, and we'll put that below this div. So we'll put a uh, button uh, class equals btn primary. That's what comes from uh, Bootstrap. And we'll say, you know, save product, okay? So that button will appear. There it is. Now, this button, when we click on it, it's not gonna do anything, because it's not hooked up to a form. So we need to hook this whole thing up to an actual HTML form. So form, action, we'll have it post to itself. The method will be a post. And we will bring all this up into our form. So the form will wrap all of this stuff. So now when we click on save product, it should uh, hypothetically speaking, sorry, uh, submit this form, right? So if I say refresh and I click on this button, it submits the form, but we get a forbidden 403 uh, because I always forget to do this. We're leveraging uh, the CS CSR. So yeah, anytime we post a form, it will actually uh, require us to pass in this hidden uh, token, the um, CSRF token. So we need to make sure we add that to our form. Thusly. So now let's go back our product, refresh the page and say save, boom. So now this is the error I was expecting. I was expecting to see a 405 error because we have not yet told our controller how to handle a post. So let's do that. Let's have our controller handle a post. So we've done a get mapping for products. We've done a get mapping for products slash product ID. And we have a post mapping for products, but we don't have a post mapping for products slash product ID. Okay, we only have a get mapping for product slash product ID. You see how that's different? We have a post for products, but we don't have a post for products slash product ID. And this endpoint includes the product ID. Okay, so when we post with this endpoint, it's saying, does this endpoint, does this structure look like anything that's mapped here? No, because we only have slash products mapped. So we need to have post mapping for slash products slash product ID. Right, wrap it in our uh, our syntax here so that it knows that this is a variable uh, piece of data. Because you know we can't just say product slash two. I mean, you could, but then it, this post mapping will only work for product ID two, and that's not helpful if you have more than one product, right? So we need to make it variable, or make it a variable, and then we can uh, sort of copy our stuff from uh, from above here. So instead of saying get product, we can say save product path variable is the product ID. So we're reading, we're taking this value that we've mapped, this name, product ID, has to map to or, or equal the name that we have here. So again, as I always use, if we call this dog poop, this would need to be called dog poop. Poop. Come on, there we go. So these two are linked. 
Okay, if these don't match, there will be a problem. But we don't want to call it dog poop because that's not an accurate name. This is a product ID. So map it like that. And uh, are we going to need anything else? Yes, we are going to need the uh, the the model. So we're passing the not the model, but the uh, it's called oh what the heck is the name for it? The model attribute. So in other words, what um, what Java object are we binding the data from the form to? So in other words, when we do a post, when we do a save from here, what are we really saving? What are we passing along? Well, we're passing along a product, okay? So that's what we're trying to map to. We're trying to map to a Java product, okay? So if all goes well, when we actually execute the post, because this is a post mapping, when we post to this endpoint, it should populate the product with the data that we filled out in our HTML form. Okay, specifically the product name is what we're actually filling out and saving. Okay, so that's hopefully what will happen. And we can do a system out um, on product to see what it equals. Assuming, of course, we've overridden the two string method inside of here. Have we done two string? No, we have not. So that's not actually not gonna be that helpful, but whatever, I'll, I'll show you that too. Um, okay, so we will do that. Let's just do that for now. And we'll say return again, since we're posting, whenever we return, we should always redirect. So let's redirect back to, um, oh, that's annoying. It copied the backslash. Let's redirect to the, uh, same product endpoint. Maybe. Okay. Let's, let's do that for now. Okie dokie. Now that's actually going to be a bit tricky because this product, we're not populating the ID. Uh, so we need to make sure we also populate the ID. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Um, you know, it's in my head, but you probably don't understand what I'm talking about. So let me, let me start my server up in debug mode. Doom da doom. And let's go to product slash two. Once it boots up, it's going to ask me to log in. Okay, so let's, uh, you know, let's do, uh, you know, product number two and say save. Okay, so now that we're, we've done that, it has hit our breakpoint and we can inspect, hopefully if all goes well, this product is not null and it has a value. Um, so there you go, it's not null, the product has values. And so two things we should see from this. The name should be populated, which if we look at it right here, hopefully you can see that the name is, pro is populated. It has product number two, which is what I typed on the HTML form. So this just proves to you that our HTML form is properly bound. It has been bound or binded, whatever you want to say. Um, the binding has correctly worked from the front end and it's now, uh, the binding is now uh, properly populating the Java object, okay? This is not an HTML object. This is Java, this is a plain old Java object. That's pretty cool, right? But the problem is the ID is null. And that's gonna be a problem if we try to save this product, because really what we're doing is we're trying to update it, right? We're not trying to create a new product, we're trying to update it. And if you remember in a past lesson, I said with Hibernate, if you execute a product.save or any repository.save, and the thing that you're saving does not have an ID populated, what's gonna happen is it's gonna try to create another row. It's gonna create a new row of data. We do not wanna create a new row of data. We wanna update the existing row of data. So that's gonna be a problem. We want to update, not create a new one. So how the heck do we populate this ID, right? You don't wanna have the user have to type in an ID to, to you know, th that would be really silly. So there's a few ways to get around this. One way is to uh, manually take the product ID here, populate it into this product, um, and then save it. That's one way of doing it. But I think what I like more is doing it from the source. Okay, so if we do it here, we're kind of uh, we're kind of hacking it a little bit. I'd rather have it so that when the data comes in here and is populated, it's already correct. And how we do that is from the front end. Okay, from the actual HTML form. So let me flip over to my other view here. So from the HTML form, we want to actually populate that ID. How do we do that? We do it with a hidden field, okay? A hidden field is just like a text box that can be populated with a value that's just, it, you can't see it, okay? You can't see it on the screen, but it gets sent along with the form, okay? When the form is, is posted, 
is sent along to the back end, it's going to be able to bind that data even though the user can't see it. So that's kind of cool. So what we can do is input type hidden and we can say th field, okay? Just, we can treat this exactly like we would treat a text box, right? Just like we have here. Treat it exactly the same, except you don't need any classes. You don't need to make it look pretty because it's literally invisible, okay? You, the, the user won't see it. So this should bind to product.id, okay? And what's gonna happen is hopefully um, from the front end when we populate the model with a product, uh, that product ID that's being populated uh, will populate this. So what, what do I mean by that? When we do a get mapping with a product ID, we're loading the product from the database and putting it onto the model. So that product from the database will have an ID. It's, it has an ID in the database. So it's gonna have an ID here because we've loaded it from the database. And then we're taking that value from the model and we're just populating it into a hidden field called product ID, which will be which will resolve to just ID. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like. Uh, I'll reboot my server and I'll show you what that looks like on the screen. And I will refresh the page. And my lunch is arriving soon. So I'm gonna have to hurry up and uh, finish this video before the uh, my lunch arrives. So let's go ahead and load this up. So if I, you see nothing has changed on the front end, but if I inspect the code here, go to sources, refresh the page, we'll see input type hidden ID, name ID, value two. So it has a value, the value is two. So when I say, you know, product number two, for example, and say save, in my debug breakpoint, when I hover over product, look, ID is now populated and it has the value of two. Cool, right? So now when I invoke a save, it will update that row instead of creating a new one. So all I need to do is this, product repo.save, right? Product equals, product equals product repo.save, and now my code is essentially done. It will update that product in the database um, as we would expect it to, and then redirect back to product slash two. So I keep checking to see, is my food here yet? But this is it, this is the end of the video, so we should be able to uh, do this in time. So now when I say product number two and actually save it, it should actually save it and it's refreshed the page now. You can't tell, uh, well you can tell because this changed to null because apparently I'm not populating that properly. Um, I need to look into why that happened. I guess we can do that in the next video. But product, I, product number two, name is now saved. So if I go to like, the, let's say product number one, load it up, there's nothing in there, publish is false. If I go to product number two, Boom, product number two is now there. Now, null has clearly been persisted to the database. I need to find out why that happened. Um, probably I know why, because it's not in the form, right? The form was not, we did not populate the form with the published value. So this makes perfect sense. The same thing that happened with my ID is now happening with the published value. We just didn't pass it from the front end. So that's a problem. We can fix that in the next video. So there you go. It is now saving uh, the product properly. And also in the video, I'm gonna show you when I did a two string here, when I did system.out, this is what it's doing. It's outputting this, which is not helpful, right? We, this does not mean anything to me other than, hey, there's a product and that's it. You know, it, at least it's not null. That is what I can uh, deduce from this, but that's this is not helpful. So yeah, in the next video, we'll talk about overriding two string, what that does and we will talk about how to properly populate this checkbox. And there's my lunch, perfect time. <laughs> so take care of yourself, happy learning, and bye for now.